Conflict between humans and elephants is intensifying on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. As their habitat dramatically shrinks, elephants are eating crops and in some cases killing farmers. In return, endangered elephants are being poisoned and killed. Half the population has been lost in just one generation. Now a patrol team made up of tame elephants and local farmers is having some success in stopping the killings. I went on patrol with them along the borders of the Bukit Barisan National Park in Lampung. Man-outs from the elephant patrol are trying to frighten a group of six wild elephants away from farming land and back towards the national park. Terrified farmers from the Parian village have called them here after the elephants arrived in the area a week ago. But up until recently, this was an elephant track. Karena sekarang udah banyak pemukiman, karena perkembangan zaman kan, akhirnya dari hutan ini mutus ke pemukiman, akhirnya dia ngacak-ngacak sini, akhirnya pulang lagi. Tapi jalannya udah nggak dulu lagi, sebenarnya pengen yang dulu lagi, tapi udah mau lewat yang dulu lagi, udah nggak bisa karena ada pemukiman. In one generation, Sumatran elephants have lost 70% of their habitat. Their jungle is rapidly being converted for palm oil and pulp and paper plantations and small-scale farms like Pak Jasmine's. He, like most of the villagers here, wasn't born here. He moved from the overpopulated island of Java to carve out a small coffee plantation from the fertile volcanic soil here. Tapi dulu tu nggak sebanyak segini lah itu. Jadi dulu kan enak digiring dulu itu. Kalau ini rasaku tuh susah ya. Iya banyak. Jadi kita itu ketakutan sebetulnya. And the man outs know that when the community is frightened, there are deaths. Itu bisa jadi mungkin gajah bunuh orang, mungkin orang juga sakit hati bunuh gajah. Itu taman nasional sebelah sana itu. A small river separates Sucipto's land from the Bukit Barisan National Park. They're in constant conflict with the elephants. Last week, like every other week, elephants came at dusk and ate their crops. Two years ago, when his father tried to stop a herd of elephants from eating his rice field, he was killed. Gak taunya dari belakang langsung gasa, langsung ditikam dari belakang itu waktu itu. Betul lihat kenyataan itu, lihat kenyataan dua. Dua gajah, jadi dihantam ke sana, dihantam ke sini. Jadi kita cuma teriak-teriak, mau apa lagi? Dia itu nggak peduli sampai orang tua kita nggak bernapas lagi. Di sini ini ditumbur dari. Sucipto says the idea of killing the elephants in revenge came to mind. Pengen, pengen balas betul itu bu waktu itu. Tapi kita, ya mau apa lagi? Kita nggak punya apa-apa. Gitu. Ya juga lagian. Berpikir lawannya sama negara itu dilindungi sama negara jadi enggak berani. Nah itu. Yang dimakan. His cousin Miss Kun Gendon says farmers viewed the national park and the elephants as the enemy. Tu gimana itu? Kalau di nu hewan dilindungi, kalau enggak di ini, gitu kan? Kalau enggak diurus, gitu kan? Ini masuk ke kampung, itu merusak kebun masyarakat ni gimana, gitu? Kalau dulu ni awalah sudah laparah masyarakat ni kayaknya mau ngajak berantem sama petugas itu. Iya. It was in the midst of these tensions that two elephant patrols were created in 2009 by the environmental group WWF in partnership with the national park staff. One here in Lampung and also on the island of Riau.
Not long after Miss Gungendong's relative was killed by a wild elephant, he was asked to become a man out. Oh, saya nggak bisa. Saya bilang gitu kan. Nanti saya ajarin bilang gitu dia. Ya udah kalau gitu. Nanti saya ajarin biar bisa. Dulu gimana pak? Yang jelas takut. Yang jelas takut bukan musuh. Takut. Ya takut kalau diinjak apa di mana kan gitu kan namanya orang takut ya seperti itulah kalau dia bunyi bunyi proet gitu saya udah lari lari juga gitu. Now he patrols the park every day on one of four trained elephants. One of the experienced man outs from the elephant patrol, Heru Santoso, guides them around the park each day. Illegal logging. Kita mencegah itu. Ya kalau dia melihat kita lari dia. Kalau sekarang dari sini udah udah apa ya udah bilang 90% udah keluar lah yang garap di TN. They're on call 24 hours a day. When possible, they use tame elephants to push the wild elephants away from the farming land and back into the national park. If they can't reach the area on elephants, they use the firework method. They also act as a bridge of understanding between the national park and the community. Miss Gungendon used to be one of the illegal farmers who were destroying the elephants' remaining habitat. Orang dulu belum tahu yang sebenarnya ini batas kawasannya mana itu kan nggak tahu batas taman nasional. Terus oh ini salah pak yang betul tuh si sebelah sini sungai kecil itu kan ini kan ada sungai kecil nih ngomongnya cerita sama saya seperti itu gitu bapak kalau tumpah darah saya ya aslinya ya di tanah taman nasional. The elephants that he now rides to patrol the borders of the national park were captured in the 1980s when this part of Sumatra was opened up. Alfian was one of the man outs who worked on that massive capture of wild elephants that followed. Kita nangkap bukan gajah yang di dalam hutan, tapi kita nangkap yang masuk ke pemukiman-pemukiman gitu. Kind of transmigrasi. Iya, transmigrasi ya. Kayak di daerah Mesuji itu mungkin kan lebih dari 200 ekor gajah itu kan. Tapi sekarang sana kita enggak ada hutan sana, cuma pemukiman. Sekarang jadi pemukiman semua ditransmigrasikan jadi untuk gajah ini enggak ada tempat lagi. This region of Sumatra has the highest rate of population growth in Indonesia. The number of people living here has increased from under 2 million in the 1960s to over 6 million this year. In an effort to save the elephants, the Waikambas Elephant Training Center was set up. Alfian says there's no chance of them returning to the wild. Bisa, tapi nggak boleh. Sama siapa? Ya, kalau dikembalikan dia mau keluar ke pemukiman. Dia sudah kenal dengan orang. Dia datang ke rumah orang terus. Dia lebih parah merusaknya kalau udah dilatih. In the elephant-human conflict, it's clear who's losing. There are only estimated to be around 2,500 elephants remaining in the wild, half the number there was just 30 years ago. Scientists say that if the current trend continues, Sumatran elephants could be extinct in the wild in our lifetime. The elephant patrol is at the front line of a battle to save them. Ketika tidak ada elephant patrol, karena masyarakat nggak merasa nggak diperhatikan dengan adanya konflik, otomatis masyarakat akan mengambil tindakan singkat, bisa diusir dengan secara halus, nggak bisa dengan secara ini brutal gitu. The most common way of killing the elephants in these parts is poisoning. Sumani, the youngest man out says he found an elephant showing signs of poisoning just 30 minutes away from their post. Ceritanya ya itulah sangat-sangat buat pengala- besar buat pengalaman kita. Teman-teman di uh, yang gajah yang megang gajah itu. Yaitu paru-parunya sama empedu sama hatinya itu udah hitam. Itu. Udah kena ini apa bisanya dia itu. Jadi udah kena inilah uh, sistem racunnya itu, racunnya udah masuk di situ di saluran darah. Recently, seven elephants were found dead, believe poisoned, near a palm oil plantation in Riau. It's illegal to kill elephants in Indonesia, but the law is rarely enforced. Dan dari beberapa kasus yang saya temui itu memang tidak banyak yang sampai ke pengadilan karena kurangnya bukti dan mungkin uh, sulitnya mencari suspek yang ada di lokasi. Jadi memang ancaman yang sangat tinggi. 
Tapi uh, buat kita jangan sampai menyerah karena kalau kita pesimis dan uh, hanya membiarkan itu maka tentu gajah akan hilang setiap tahunnya. The elephant patrol team shows the scars of the battle taking place. Karnangin lost a tusk in a road accident. Yonki has a gun wound in her ear and had to have a bullet removed from her side. And the rangers believe baby Tommy's mother was killed and that's why he wandered into the elephant patrol post one day. Ke, dengan kenyataan dia itu datang ke pos sendirian. Enggak ada teman. Jadi tiga kali di kita masukin di dari elephant patrol dia enggak mau. Dimasukin sok pagi besok paginya udah pulang lagi ke pos itu udah sampai tiga kali mungkin ya kita berpikir panjangnya mungkin dia nggak mau gabung lagi sama yang liar mungkin mau kita urusin lah. Semani has built up an intimate relationship with Tommy and the other elephants, but his family used to be one of the illegal farmers destroying the elephant habitat inside the national park, and they saw elephants as a threat. He says he now tries to educate his family. Uh, apa sih fungsinya hutan, fung, uh, fungsinya gajah dan satwa yang lain-lain itu kan fungsinya apa itu kan saya kasih tahu ini 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 kawasan itu fungsinya jantungnya dunia adalah kawasan saya bilang itu kan dia mungkin benar juga mungkin kan biarpun anak kecil mungkin sama keluarga saya itu mungkin ya bisa ini sih ini, uh, pertimbangan dulu kan dia itu jadi oh iya benar atau salah iya atau enggak itu kan Sumani says even to protect their small patch of the national park requires constant vigilance. Ya maaf yang ngomong lebih baik enaknya mengatur hewan daripada orang. Ya orang itu yang satu di bilang ini ya nurut, yang satu lagi memprovokatori. Ngapain kamu nurut omongan ini? Ya kalau benar, kalau salah, ngapain kamu turutin? Nah, kalau satwa kan nggak mungkin. Takut punah nggak kerja di sini? Ya kalau saya sih sebenarnya. Ada rasa segitunya, tapi kan namanya kita itu cuma prasangka buruknya kan. Yang penting kita jangan sampai lah kita menuduh kan. Nanti apa cucu anda harus lihat ya. <laughs> iya. Enggak cuma kakeknya, woi dulu kakeknya pegang gajah ini, kan <laughs> nih fotonya itu kan enggak segitu. Harus tahu, woi gajah kayak gini ya, nah kan udah tahu berarti dia kan. Kalau udah enggak ada lagi, <laughs> mau lihat fotonya nangis. <laughs> And that's all for this edition of Asia Calling, your window on Asia. For more stories from our correspondents around the region, visit our website at portalkbe.com and just click on Asia Calling. I'm Rebecca Hinchke. Thanks for your company. Goodbye for now.